Welcome to another accounting tutorial video. This time we're going to answer a very specific question that was submitted the other day, which is, as you can see, why are gains and losses on asset sales considered non-cash charges? So here's the exact question that came in. Why do you add them back or subtract them in the cash flow from operations section of the cash flow statement along with depreciation and amortization? So our plan in this last one will be to first explain what gains and losses are and how you usually see them. Then we'll explain one method for thinking about why they're non-cash adjustments. This method relates to the timing differences inherent in gains and losses. Then I'll explain another method you can use to think about it. And this one is more about reclassifying gains and losses to other sections of the financial statements. Let's start with what gains and losses are. Typically on a company's cash flow statement, you will see something like this in the cash flow from operating activities section. Loss on disposals of property, plant, and equipment. Sometimes they'll show gains. Sometimes they'll show gains and losses. Sometimes it'll be just pp &E. Sometimes it'll be other assets. But you'll almost always see some type of line item like this, usually right below or above the depreciation and amortization line. This could come up, for example, if you buy a long-term asset, such as a machine, a piece of equipment, or a building for $100, then you hold it for two years, its market value decreases to $80, but its book value stays the same at 100. Just to simplify this, we're gonna assume no depreciation here. So let's just say that its book value stays the same. You bought it for 100, but now it's only worth 80, and you decide to sell the asset for $80 at the end of two years. Or maybe its value has actually gone up to 120, and now you decide to sell that for 120. Now, when this scenario happens in real life, you would record it something like this. You would, if you sold it for 80, you would record it as a loss of 20. So it'd show up as a negative 20 on the income statement. And then you would say that you've sold off 100 worth of pp &E. So on the financial statements, it would look something like this. You have a negative on the income statement, reduces your pre-tax income and net income. And then on the cash flow statement, you add back that loss of 20. Net income is lower, but overall your cash balance is up because you've added back a loss and you've saved something on taxes. Then you record the net amount that you've received down here, the ED that you've sold everything for. And then on the balance sheet, you reflect the higher cash balance, the lower pp &E, and then equity also changes because net income is different. The part that trips most people up is why we add back the loss or subtract the gain out here. And the most common question we get on this topic is, wait a minute, we received that entire $80 in cash. How can we say there's a $20 non-cash add back? It seems like this is an entirely cash-based transaction because we sold something for 80 and we got 80 in cash for it. The answer has to do with timing and also what you record on the income statement. Now, in this period on the income statement, yes, we record a loss of 20, but remember we purchased this equipment or this building, or whatever it is, probably more than a year ago, maybe two years ago, three years ago, even if it's a year ago, it still counts as a long-term asset. So we purchased this in a prior period. That prior period is not shown on this income statement because this income statement only tracks what's going on in this period. Now, that's very important here because what it means is that we haven't actually lost $20 in this period. We purchased the asset in some prior year because it's a long-term asset. And of course, this year's income statement is tracking only what happens in this year. So yes, relative to what we paid for it before we've lost something, but in this specific period, we don't actually have a cash loss here. And so from the perspective of this year that we're currently in, it's not a cash loss. And like you said, in the original question, we did get the $80 entirely in cash. And so the whole reason we're adding it back here is because we had to record a negative on the income statement. And this negative is not a real cash expense that's costing us something in this period. Instead, it just reflects that the price fell and we sold it for less than we bought it for. But in this period, it's not a cash expense. And that is why we add it back right here on the cash flow statement. Now, if you have a loss like we did here, you're always going to add them back in cash flow from operations. And then in investing activities, you reflect the book value of the asset when it was sold, net of whatever gain or loss that you have. The loss would be the case here. 
So in this section, this 80 really means that we had an asset with a book value of 100. We sold it at a $20 loss. And so the total net proceeds are 80 right here. And if you look at any Excel model that is set up properly, it should do the same thing. The PP&E sale proceeds will reflect whatever actual amount you've sold in terms of book value, but then they'll also reflect whatever gain or loss you've had when you've sold those assets. Now, when you have a gain, the logic is very similar because for example, if you go into Excel and you record a gain of 20 on the income statement, let's say, yes, we have it here, but in this period, this is not something additional we've earned. We've only earned this relative to what we've spent in some prior year, but something that was not shown on this set of financial statements. So since we haven't really earned an additional $20 in this period, we go to the cash flow statement and we subtract this out as a non-cash adjustment right here. And then once again, we show the total amount received down here. So if we have a gain, we show the book value of 100, and then we add that gain of 20 to it right here. So you subtract gains in cash flow from operations, and then you reflect the book value of the asset, net of the gain, in cash flow from investing. So 100 plus the gain of 20 equals 120 right here. So that's method number one that you can use for thinking about this. It has to do with the timing differences and the fact that in the period you're in, you don't actually have a cash loss or gain. You only have that relative to what you've spent in some prior period. Now, another way to think about this is what I call the reclassification method. What you're really doing, in a sense, is reclassifying the gain or loss out of operating activities into investing activities. When a company sells a long-term asset, should you really think of that as an operational activity? And we'd say, no, of course not. Because first off, when a company buys a long-term asset, that counts as an investing activity. That is simply capital expenditures or CapEx. And there are other various line items for different types of long-term assets, but they all show up under investing activities for the most part. So when you buy a long-term asset, it shows up here. And when you sell a long-term asset, everything should also show up here. Now, the cash flow from operations section of the cash flow statement, beyond just showing the non-cash charges and the change in working capital and net income, for example, is also used to reclassify items into different sections in a lot of cases. One good example is excess tax benefits from stock-based compensation. I have here Yahoo's financial statements from one year, and you can see that what they're doing is saying that these excess tax benefits are actually more of a financing item, so they take them out of their net income within the cash flow from operations section here, and then they add them back in cash flow from financing activities to reclassify them and move those tax benefits down there. So you can also use the cash flow statement for this purpose to move items around to different sections. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We record that loss of 20 on the income statement. And if we leave it in, let's just move this back to a loss for now. So if we leave this in, we're saying that it's part of our net income. And then we're also saying that by virtue of that, if we did not add it back right here, it would also be part of our cash flow from operations. So in other words, we're saying that since we sold it for our loss, our cash flow from operating activities is now 12 lower. That doesn't really make any sense because this sale has nothing to do with the company's core business operating activities. So instead, we add it back, reclassify it out, and show everything down here, and we move the whole thing down to investing activities instead. So that's another way to think about it. it. Might be a little bit more intuitive to think about it in terms of reclassifying it from operating activities into investing activities. And that's another reason why it shows up in this section as an adjustment within cash flow from operations. So to do a quick recap and summary, gains and losses really come up when you buy a long-term asset for one price. Its book value is something, but then you sell it for a value that is different from its book value. Losses you show with a negative on the income statement, you add back and then reflect the full amount within cash flow from investing. And then gains, you do the opposite. You show a positive number on the income statement, you subtract it out in cash flow from operations, and then you reflect the full amount, the net amount within cash flow from investing. You can think of them as non-cash adjustments because of the timing differences. They do correspond to cash losses or gains, but not in the period shown on the income statement and cash flow statement. They correspond to some loss or gain over something from a prior period that's not being shown on the statements. 
So that's why you count them as non-cash adjustments. Or you can think of them as reclassifications. They're not really part of a company's operating activities. They're really part of a company's investing activities. And that's why they show up and why you take them out of cash flow from operations and put them back into cash flow from investing activities instead. So I hope you understand intuitively this concept and why gains and losses count as non-cash adjustments on the financial statements.